<laughs> Just look at that. Just letting my knife kind of do the work. Hey, what is up everybody? My name is David Chambers and right now I am in the Florida Keys. Check out that water, how beautiful is that? Right there is a big old mangrove jungle and there is a big old giant fat male invasive green iguana right in those trees. I brought a fishing pole, I'm gonna fish them out. I've never been fishing for iguanas before. This is definitely a first, but I'm feeling good about it, you guys. So hey, stay tuned, check it out. Be sure to watch the whole video because we're gonna do something awesome with this iguana. And I'm just excited. Check it out right now. Look at the iguana right there. Look at it, look at it, check it out. Let's get him. We just got them. Thank God Mike gave me that 100 pound test because there'd be no way without it. We just got a big, fat, awesome South Florida, Florida Keys, Keys Iguana, invasive species, awesome to eat, so I've heard. And he looks mean, he just death rolled like crazy all over this thing. And I, look at this, I'm in the middle of these mangroves, okay, the water of the Keys is right there. I'm on the, I'm on the Gulf side right now and these mangroves all over here. This is like swamp bottom here. I saw him on the road and I chased him down to here in this, in this just nothingness over here in these awesome mangroves, mangroves. This is my pen battle on a pretty heavy duty eight foot rod with a hundred pound test FG knot tied to my braid. Check this out, you guys. I was like all, look at this place. This is just mangroves and just craziness. It's like just straight up Florida Keys jungle right here. And look right there. That's our green iguana right there good size on those legs got a big old tail on them holy crap now the question now is how do i get him out of these mangroves because he is tangled up boy he death rolled like crazy there he is baby florida green iguana right there check him out these things are invasive in Florida and they cause damage like nobody's business, but look at them. Crap, my cage is on that side. I didn't want all the traffic in the world to see me because people don't really understand the situation with these animals about the invasiveness. And they see me catch them in kind of a tough way here to where he may be a little bit hurt. But you gotta get rid of them. You gotta take care of these things. They're invasive, they're not good, they're very bad. All right, you guys, so it's windy as heck out here. Sorry if the audio quality is bad here, but hey, I got the iguana in the trap there, in the cage, and that line really wrapped around his neck whenever he death rolled. And I'm not trying to you know, hurt him in any way right now. Um, I don't want him to, him to die a, a slow suffering death where he's being strangled. So I'm gonna go over there and try to get him, get that, that, that line off his neck because you know he's secure now and I can work with him in that way. I did not want to get scratched up. He's breathing. I can see him breathing all right. He's good. All those cars, they see me handling this like They're like, what the heck is that crazy dude doing over there? <laughs> there he is, right there. Look at him. He's really cool looking, isn't he? Whoa, he just whipped the crap out of me. Thank God for that wall there because she would have just probably scarred my face. It's a big male and man, that tail just came flying. All right, you guys, I caught the iguana. 
back seat right there. It is hot as heck. Traffic seems to have picked up. Traffic was like totally stopped whenever I stopped, but I was just bored. But hey, this turned out to be awesome. You know, you never know when something, you know, sucky, like traffic being too slow, is gonna turn into something else awesome because if I would've been flying through here, I would never have seen them, would never have stopped. And man, everything happens for a reason. But hey, I'm gonna get home and I'll see you guys. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I've never done anything like that before and it was, I had an awesome time doing that. Just like doing new things like that is so fun to me. But hey, I've never cleaned a green iguana before. I've never cleaned any kind of thing before besides like a pig or a deer or a fish. So this is totally different, but I'm just gonna do it like I would if it was a, like a wild hog or something to where you skin it up and skin down the feet and all that and uh, down the legs and quarter it out and we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna start off cutting where there's not really much meat on the tail, so like right there. Just like a gator. See like, <laughs> I kinda wanna hook him onto a fishing hook right now and throw him in the lake across the road and just see if we can catch a big old bass. It's like a self-moving lure, look at that. <laughs> Here. Yeah, thank you. No. <laughs> So these things, um, their nerves last forever, like longer than most animals being like a reptile. So, I mean, he was, like I put a bullet in his head about like what, 15 minutes ago? And he still has those nerves going on. He can't feel anything right now, he's totally dead. So I'm just gonna skin him just like I would any kind of animal. I'm gonna go right up his back, right there. and do one more on the other side. Just right one slit on each side of his spine is what I'm doing here. I'm trying to be careful because his nerves are so active, he may actually claw me. I mean, he's not clawing me, his nerves will be clawing me because he's dead. And seriously, if anybody is worried about him being alive right now because of the movement you're seeing, go online and read about it. An iguana or an alligator or a reptile, their nerves, they stay going for like 24 hours if you were to just leave them. So, but he is guaranteed dead. I would never do this to a live animal. All right, there goes that. Next thing, I'm gonna top his head off. So once I cut that head off, the blood just started gushing out and I want to make sure that I've got that all drained out of him so I don't get any kind of bloody, bloody flavor to him. Because if it's anything like a wild animal, like a wild pig or anything, then the more blood he has in him, then the gamier and kind of more wild he's going to taste. And I want to get all the blood out as possible, give him the most pleasant taste possible. I'm going to cut this off because it's just making things harder. Guys, do me a favor. I've got my recipe kind of in my mind about what I'm gonna do with him, which you're gonna see in a second. And it's nothing that I've ever seen on any kind of YouTube video of an iguana before. So you're probably gonna be surprised. So be sure to stay tuned and see that and check that out. But hey, leave a comment down below and let me know what you guys would do, what kind of recipe you would do for a green iguana, like besides just grilling him. Do you have any kind of specific recipe that is unique. I'd love to hear about it and try it one day. I'm gonna do my best to get him skinned out here. That's all. Just kind of pulling on his on his hide. And while I do that, just letting my knife kind of do the work. I'm not really putting any pressure at all on here. I never have realized how long and crazy their their claws and toes are. I mean, it really is like a dinosaur. And those things right there, look at those claws. That is so sharp. If I was to actually, if I was to rub that across my finger and put pressure on it, it would guarantee cut my skin. Right now I'm gonna go ahead and cut off his, his feet, okay? Cause there's a joint there and a joint there. There's meat there, I can feel it. And there's meat right there. 
There's no meat there. I'm not going to eat his feet. That's just kind of weird. If it isn't already weird eating, eating an iguana. <laughs> <laughs> so I can kind of feel where his joint's at right there, which is right there. Get my knife right in there. Boom. There we go. Right there again, joint. Now, on each limb, what I'm going to do is grab my knife and I'm going to cut straight down like that. And just go straight down his arm. I'm going to do that on both, si on both sides in the front and also on his two legs. Like I said, you guys, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I'm just improvising here. Just kind of looking at him and trying to figure out what to do here. Now that his claws are off, he isn't going to reach over and his nerves aren't going to claw me. So that's good. I'm just working with him, guys, with the skin here. I'm trying to peel that hide right off. Like I said, I'm by no means an experienced iguana cleaner, but I'm very happy that I saved that nice big square right there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll him all up with salt and let this kind of sit and I'm gonna preserve this hide so I can make something out of it. But for now, that's our end result. Look at that. Look how awesome those crazy colors are. The design right here. I know a lot of you are like, oh, you think it's an awesome animal, but you just put a bolt in its head. Well, hey. You know, these things, they're invasive in Florida. They cause tons of damage. They eat native wildlife's food, like different kinds of flowers and things. They burrow under roads on the sides of canals in South Florida and create situations to where they can compromise the integrity of the roads, of seawalls and everything like that. And they're a huge, huge problem. You know, when I brought this iguana home, I was, I was debating on if I wanted to keep him or not, like, like try to tame him. But what happened was I saw that there was a law that said that you cannot keep green iguana in the state of Florida. Even if you're an existing pet owner of a green iguana, um, as of July 1st, 2020, you were either required to euthanize your iguana or turn it into the state or buy some kind of special permit. And I wasn't about to deal with that. So we choose to eat them. I'm just going to fillet this tail just like I'd fillet a fish. That's just my, that's just what I'm thinking we should do here. I'm just cutting chunks of meat off this thing. It's probably not the proper way, but we're not really following them by a rule book right now. Anywhere where there's that discoloration, I'm gonna cut off. I'm not gonna use any of that discolored meat for anything because it just doesn't look good. Look at that, that shoulder plate, just like on a pig. Same thing. Stack that right up on there. And I'm gonna let that catch fire and just turn into like coals. The weather, like when I just about burnt out all the way. I'm gonna put a grill on top and start, start cooking. And don't forget about these. These two coconuts came from right where I caught that iguana. A few different things going here. Some bread, olive oil, some salt, gator hammock, uh, gator sprinkle from South Florida, barbecue sauce. I'm just grabbing ingredients I thought would look good. An onion, some lime, and some more salt. I'm gonna get all that iguana right in there. Throw some olive oil in there. Get some of that gator hammock. A little bit of salt. <laughs> and some barbecue sauce. And then while I'm at it, might as well get that lime in there. 
Oh yeah. I love juicing limes. Gotta mix it all up real nice. I'm gonna let that just marinate right in there for about five minutes. Look at that. I think one. I bet I can catch it. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get the food going. That right there was a whole vanilla onion. How much should I throw that? Right there. Because why not? I'm just going to place them on there just like I would any other piece of meat. I'll put the thicker pieces over the hotter coals. Grab this juice and just kind of let it go on there. Look at the beauty. Oh. That juice is just going to steam right up back into that meat. I never imagined that I'd be this excited about the iguana, but it looks really good. Check it out. Look at that. We are, it is looking more and more like a barbecue should look right now. And that nice dark look on it. It is so close to being done and so close to being eaten. And you better believe we're gonna make an iguana sandwich out of this iguana, the whole shebang. And I'm so excited to see what it's gonna taste like. You guys, I don't know if you know this, but iguana is actually a very important resource for people in a lot of different countries like South America and things. Um, they eat them frequently. It's like a commonly eaten thing in other countries out of here. It's amazing the kind of things that we think we would never eat, never touch, and think about consuming, but, but, but like in other countries, it's a common day-to-day -day thing. Like, it's like eating chicken for us. I just cut that piece of iguana open, and it's guaranteed cooked through. I did not expect it to be juicy. It's like a juicy, it's like a chicken thigh. Do you like chicken? I told you it was good. It's <laughs> it's, and it's, it's juicy, right? It's like not tough. I thought it was gonna be tough. It's really good. Guys, I'm telling you what, that gator hammock mixed with the barbecue sauce and that lime, that is amazing. I mean, that whole flavor of this whole iguana, it just tastes perfect. It has like a nice kind of smoky flavor. I'm sure it has something to do with the smoke coming up from those palm fronds, but um, it's a nice smoky flavor. You know, sometimes you can get that like overpower fiery flavor when you cook with just regular firewood, but that's not at all the case here. I taste a really good combination of the gator hammock, the barbecue sauce, and the lime mixed with the smoke, and it's ultimately really good. I would definitely suggest getting some of that because that gator hammock, I have no idea who makes it. Um, you know, like, I mean, all I know is that it's in Felda, Florida and you're probably going to find it more often in kind of like little hometown country stores. Um, and cause I've never seen it in like a Publix or a Walmart. I got this in a little kind of small local store here called Felton's, but, uh, it's really good. Now come over here. A neighbor of mine gave me this pepper plant. Now, I'm trying to find some that are ripe. That looks ripe. Oh yeah, that's ripe. <laughs> These things are spicy, I'm telling you. I'm not eating that. I don't know what kind of pepper they are, but they're good. I mean, they're spicy as heck. I think that because they're less ripe, they're gonna be a little bit less spicy. But hey, look at those. Those are, I mean, hey, if you know what kind of peppers those are, leave a comment, because I have no idea. And I wanna know because they're really good and they grow fantastic here in Florida. I'm, I'm almost as excited about this onion as I was about the iguana. Okay. Most people would see this onion and they'd be like, that thing is burnt to all crap, David. But look at that, look, come see this. I just cut right through that. It's just juicy. Here. Let it cool off and I want you to try it. Me? I don't eat onions. No, this is really it's sweet. It's not spicy at all. I'm telling you. It's gonna cost you another cherry Coke. <laughs> I'm gonna owe her like a whole case of cherry Coke by the time we're done here. <laughs> Grab yourself a piece of bread right here. Nice big old slap barbecue sauce. Oh yeah. Grab some of your, look at this, come here. I've got some of this iguana meat. Peppers are mixed into there. Throw it right there. 
This is gonna be spicy and full of iguana flavor and fantastical, if I can say that. Fantastical. Here we go. Throw your onions on there, right there on top. If y'all are wondering if I wash my hands, the answer is absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> because this is mine and I'm not making it for somebody else. So if I were to make you food, rest assured, I will wash my hands before I mess with it. Did you wash your hands before you made it for me? <laughs> you saw me, come on. Here we go, look at that. That's an iguana sandwich, you guys. This iguana sandwich is gonna be the bomb.com. So good. Wow. These peppers are hot. Dang. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what pepper my neighbor gave me, but them things are like ghost peppers. Right up in your sinus. Drink your water. I'm gonna need milk or ice cream or something. Dang, that's hot. I'm, my mouth is on fire right now. <laughs> Come on, David. <laughs> Somebody help me. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's not coming. <laughs> Water not helping. Go get some milk <laughs> or bread. That'll work <laughs> without choking. <laughs> God, now you definitely have to tell me what kind of peppers those are because next time I make a video recommending <laughs> them, I gotta make you sign a waiver before you watch it. Dang, and things are hot. Oh my gosh, those peppers were hot. I couldn't even talk anymore, you guys. Hey, let me know in the comment section what kind of peppers those are. And also, while you're down there, do me a favor. Let me know overall kind of what you thought of the video. I really love the feedback. And um, I want to say thank you so much for hanging out with us. And also, if you want to see more, please don't forget to subscribe. It'll help me out. It'll also help you guys see whenever I upload a video. I highly recommend that if you get your hands on some iguana and cook it up nicely, do it. Because it was surprisingly tasty and amazingly good. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for hanging out today. I appreciate you and look forward to seeing you in the next one.